my name is Tanaya Nash. I will be explaining briefly about the Lily Mercara Museum before we go in to be guided by a docent inside the museum. Lily May Carol Jackson was born in on May 25th, 1889. She was an activist and she was an organizer for the NAACP and she worked alongside people like Martin Luther King, Thurgood Marshall, etc. And she was an activist that changed many things and that helped with equity amongst African Americans and permitted them to go into some schools in Baltimore. Um, what else to say? She valued faith, education, and family. That was one of her most prized things that she held close to her heart. And she also had uh, health complications that you will further learn inside the museum. And she had to get a surgery which affected the muscles in her face and it affected her speech and her facial expressions and she usually took pictures on the other side where the damage was done. She said she would dedicate herself and she prayed to the Lord that if her face remained and if her health pulled through that she would dedicate herself to serving her people for the betterment of African Americans and to have integration and to be equal. Lily, Car Lily May Carroll was an activist who helped her child get into that school. Uh, one of her daughters also married Clarence Mitchell Mitch Jr. And he was also an activist who did many things to promote equity amongst African Americans. Her child or her daughter is the director of the museum and she coordinates most of the things that happen inside of it. Her mother wanted or Lily May wanted to have the museum dedicated to be a more home to be a museum when she passed so she, people can know what happened in the past. There's a lot of pictures and artifacts and stuff, well not artifacts really, but items in her home that was hers. Um, when you go in there is the orientation room in the back with her graduation dress and a picture was shown in the back with her holding, I believe, was her either her diploma or her degree. When you walk in, I believe that was the banner for the NAACP. When people were lynched or hanged, they would put that banner outside, and I believe it was like a man was lynched yesterday or today, and um, they put that out there to raise awareness to the people who didn't know. Right. So maybe some time inside. Are you going to be the main dose in here? No, no. there's going to be somebody that will be. Oh, the music. I mean, uh, four or five. Okay. Um, we're going to walk up the street to the museum now. You got it, Richard. And she would have such guests as Martin Luther King. Rosa Parks, Jackie Robinson, and of course, Clarence Mitchell, her son-in-law and daughter, Juanita Jackson Mitchell. Those may sound familiar, young men in the back, tall guys. <laughs> you, were you here before? Which, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, I was here. Okay, all right, so I can ask you lots of questions, right? <laughs> So, welcome, welcome. Now, I'm going to take you this way. Did anybody notice this when they walked in? Yes. George Arnold, 1933. Not only did they lynch him, flee from the jail, lynch him, cut off his ear, 
with you know various forms of mutilation. They also set him up late. It was not unlike many lynchings in the U.S. where there were crowds watching. You know, we we AJI Equal Justice Initiative. You heard of that? Yes. With Brian Stevenson. It's documented over 4,000, maybe 4,500 racially motivated lynchings in America. Okay, we're gonna go watch her. We, you didn't have time for the documentary before, did you? Mitchell also as a reporter went and reported on that. 
students went to uh, South End for that. But anyway, Miss Jackson, or Miss Juanita Jackson Mitchell, you'll see her on the cover of Crisis Magazine, which was in NAACP's May Magazine when she first got hired. But she painted it as a young lady and continued throughout all her years that she was able. Now, Clarence, especially you young men, might want to do some research on him. 